Hey everybody, Catherine Massell here, Master Intuitive Energy Healer and Ascending Earth Creatrix. Yes, enjoying another afternoon walking the pup in the meadow. Say hi, Skinny. <laughs> and pondering this idea of duality which has been very much on my mind lately and you know one of the ways that this gets shown to us in s such stark relief how we marinate in this illusion of duality is with specifically how we look at our money story how we feel about money what we think about money what we believe about money there is one thing one energetic one vibration that we occupy. There are, there are a few, but I think this is the preeminent one that keeps us marinating in this place of duality, and especially when it comes to how we think about or what we believe about money. And that is judgment. Now, let me explain a little bit about the energetic vibration of judgment. If you think of the emotional spectrum, a continuum of different emotions that go from very, very low vibrations to very, very high vibrations. Some of the highest vibrations being, of course, love, forgiveness, mercy, kindness, compassion. And on the lower end of the spectrum, we have um, hatred, we have anger, we have, even though anger is a little bit higher up, but one of the lowest vibrations is judgment. So if you're trying to call in something like money because you want it to give you a higher quality of life, allow you to experience more joy, more love, more inclusion, more support, all of those things that are, the, that are on the very high end of the emotional spectrum, if you want money to come into your life and supply that, that energetic so you can have those things, if you are in this place, this energetic vibration of judgment, you are completely annihilating <laughs> and counter believing, counter feeling everything that, about the energetic you want to be in if you want to attract money. So let me put it this way. Oh, there's coyotes over there. How very exciting. And say hello. Let me know you're joining. I can't see all of my comments right here because I'm in the sun. But here's what happens with judgment. When we are thinking about our money story, let's just say right now, I have money. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money to pay rent. Um, I don't have enough money to get this awesome program that Catherine is offering. I don't have enough money to get this new book I want at Amazon. I don't have enough money to put groceries in my fridge. I don't have enough money to pay my utilities this month. Um, I am this or I am that based on my money story too. I am poor. I am never getting ahead. I am never supported. I am someone who never has money show up for me when I need it. So when you are thinking about money in that way, you are in this duality of I am or I am not. I have or I have not. And money is this great magnifier of those dualities, but the judgment that goes along with that is often very poisonous, very toxic to our energy. And once we're marinating in that energy that is so far down at the end of the emotional spectrum, it's really hard to pick ourselves up out of that, to extricate ourselves from that swamp of low vibration to get to the other end to where we want to be. Hi, Allison. So the judgment to me is that one thing that if we can move beyond the judgment around money, I am or I am not poor, I have or I do not have money, um, and especially how we shoot ourselves in the foot with judgment even more. Because it's not only that we are judging and, and marinating in that lack duality of I am or I am not or I have or I have not, but we start going down the rabbit hole with more judgment around why we don't have the money. And it often goes into these very diminishing and discounting feelings that we have about ourselves that most often are not true. But if we say them to ourselves often enough, they become our truth. I don't have enough money because the universe doesn't su support me. The universe doesn't have my back because God hates me. I don't have money because I'm a terrible person. I've done terrible things. 
I don't have money because people are doing terrible things to me. Maybe you have a persecution or a victim complex. Um, and I'm not laughing at you. I'm just giving you lots of examples. I am poor because I can't ever get a good job. I am not worthy of having a better job. I'm not worthy of having more money. I don't have money because my family's never had money. So do you see all the judgment, how it just steamrolls and creates this very defeatist energetic? And when that happens, because of the power of this vibration of judgment and how that only lends itself to duality, it's very hard to step out of that and transcend it. Now, as long as we have a body in this dimensional playing ground of 3D, we will experience duality. So unless you've found some way to completely transcend this and you're a yogi or um, some sort of incredible spiritual, spiritual guru, first of all, I want to work with you, um, you're not going to transcend this duality completely. But because we are on this fast track of ascension energies, because we have greater dimensional ranges of experience open to us at this point, we get to go in and out of what I call the singularity or singular, singular unified field of consciousness. We get to experience the one. We get to experience the one all, the all that is. We get to feel, maybe if it's even, it's fleeting, maybe it's not there for very long. But many of us have this experience of being able to step in and out of this duality, especially when we're very far entrenched in it, and have these, these lucid moments of feeling very connected to everything, of feeling very open, of feeling very expansive, of feeling full of potential and possibility. You feel like there is maybe just a moment, and maybe it's fleeting, but it is a moment of glimpsing your infinite potential and it feels wonderful. Now for many of us, because it doesn't feel familiar, we don't know how to sustain it, or we don't feel like we have the ability to, ability to sustain it, or we feel like we don't have the the worth of being able to sustain it. We're not sure that we should be doing this. We're not sure we should be playing with this. So we kind of cut it off. And then we go back to the things that are very familiar that, again, bring us back to this feeling and experience of duality. And we often do that by the emotions we tend to lean into. So notice this, the next time you feel that, that opening up, even if it's just a little glimpse of it, even if it's just a little taste of it, if it's like a grain of sand and it just feels like, oh, I just want to be in this place for a second, allow that feeling to take over because this is your most natural state as an infinite being having a human experience. It's not natural, actually, to be in resistance. It is more natural to allow. So allow yourself to sustain this energetic. And I'll give you another little trick to help you kind of close this gap and, and bridge this way of stepping out of duality and going into a singular field of consciousness which, which connects you to the, the infinite divine. And that is, instead of saying to yourself or having your inner, inner monologue, inner dialogue be, I am poor because I can't ever get a good job to make enough money. I am poor because my husband doesn't make enough money. Start thinking about it in a completely different frame of mind. And I know this is hard, but the best way to do it is to just begin with a thought. Begin with a statement that you say to yourself. I'm not attracting all the money I want yet. Now this is a bridge, and this is still duality, but it is a bridge. Because it has this little qualifier on the end of that statement that leaves it open-ended, that leaves some possibility, that allows some leeway and a little bit of wiggle room. Get what I'm saying here? Here's another way you can say it. You can use an affirmation, which is a great way to elevate the subconscious mind into a higher energetic so that it's not in survival mode all the time and learning with the emotional brain how to create a new value of your experience. You can use an affirmation like why is it so safe for me to attract more money? Why is it so safe and right and okay for me to open up new ways of receiving abundance? Start playing with this. We're very, very creative beings. Problem is, we're being really creative at new ways to find ourselves in more lack mentality. And we are just out of practice with being abundant. 
Many of us who've been on this earth for this lifetime for many years and maybe many lifetimes before, we get learned out of what it feels like to be energy beings operating from the place of our infinite potential. So we have to get back into this practice and there are ways that we can do this. Another way to kind of bridge that gap would be to start writing things down that you really feel, that you really feel or believe about your experience and really creating the awareness of what you're thinking and feeling all day long. Because sometimes our thoughts, our feelings are so much on autopilot, we're not checked in to just how diminishing our thoughts and feelings are and how much they create an energetic of judgment and how much they create an energetic of more lack mentality where we take our whole experience and funnel it through a lack filter. We're really good at doing that. <laughs> We're really creative at finding new ways to do that. But we can take that creativity and find much more positive ways to affect change in our life with that level of creativity. And I'll think of more examples, I just can't think of them right now, of being able to bridge that gap and kind of create a, a pathway to go from this rigid confine of duality and move into a consciousness that of, of I am becoming this. Maybe I'm not there yet, but I'm becoming this. Every day I'm becoming more of who I wish to become. Every day I'm realizing more of who I've already become. Every day I am seeing more evidence of abundance in my life. Even if it sounds like bullshit at first, because it will. For many of us, it's going to sound like bullshit at first. It's going to sound like fairy dust and unicorn rainbows. But that's okay. Allow that just to flow through the sieve of your lack filter. Let it settle out. Let it go where it needs to go. And then just keep doing it. Because what do you have to lose, really? And if you feel shy about sharing this with others, you know, it can be your own secret game that you play with yourself. And it can be your own secret game that you play with yourself when you're around others who are extremely negative. You can use this as a deflecting me mechanism. Some of us are married to people or we have family and friends in our lives who are just plain toxic. They're a negative Nelly, they're Debbie Downers. And so saying things like this to yourself, instead of just mirroring back their thoughts or energies in your own mind, say something that completely deflects that and then don't be surprised at the results. So not only do we get to play with this, but we get to create from this place of play. It doesn't have to feel like work. It can feel creative, it can feel playful, it can feel engaging, it can feel open, it can feel expansive. It can feel full of the ripeness of infinite potential, if we allow it. Because remember what I said, it takes much more energy to resist abundance, to resist money coming in, than it is to allow it. But we're unpracticed. We've been learned out of how to do that. So no one can help you do that. I mean, I, I do. <laughs> but no one can make you do that. No one can do it for you. There are really good guides out there. I happen to be one of them because I teach the Money Lab, which is coming up on October 13th, and I've already got women in there. We haven't even started yet, and three out of the seven ladies in there have already reported back to me that they are receiving money. And I'm not just, just talking about, I feel abundant. I mean, actual cold, hard cash coming in. I have created this space that is all about the power of alchemy meaning taking the best of our creative potential and putting it in a space and holding this space for you, this vessel, which is the money lab for you to create, to alchemize all of these wonderful new thoughts and beliefs and feelings that you are so ready to bring in at this time and create a new rea reality for yourself. I'm creating that space for you. I'm holding that space for you. There are already meditations and there's an exercise, really powerful exercise in there to help you get clarity on what you want right now, why you want it, um, what you're holding on to as far as feelings and beliefs around why you can't have it. 
that's already in there right now and there's already three powerful activations one of them I just did last night which is remembering your future which helps you work in this place of singularity this zone that is beyond the the dual reality of what we experience here in 3d this is the new manifesting tool that's coming in for us that is available to us now but we have to have more moments where we're transcending this duality where we can see beyond I am or I am not where we can see beyond and feel beyond I have or I have not so money lab starts October 13th there's already great stuff in there it's already um, moving and shaking in there there's great ladies in there all the details for joining up are right here I want to wish you so much love and peace from this gorgeous gorgeous meadow and I will see you all soon